Welcome to Alsted School Sports College's BBC School Report. We have produced reports on three issues which affect teenagers. Our reports are on mental health in teenagers tackling in PE lessons and the risk of too much sugar. Hi, I'm Holly and this is Annabelle and we are in Year 9 at Alsted Secondary School here to talk to you about mental health. When we talk about mental health, we mean a person's condition with regard to their psychological and emotional well-being. Everyone has mental health and it is thought of in a few different ways. This includes how we feel about ourselves and the people that surround us, our ability to maintain friendships and relationships as well as making them, how we develop emotionally and our ability to learn from others. Most people who have serious mental health issues such as depression, anxiety and bipolar often don't talk about it or get help from local doctors who can guide them through it. It's a really good thing that there are organisations such as Young Minds who focus on mental health, stigma, discrimination and many other things too. We have met some of the people from Young Minds and they really are lovely people who genuinely care about your mental health and wellbeing. Mental health problems can develop from many things. Bullying. Constantly having insults and threats thrown at you really get in your head. Soon you start to believe what the bullying is saying. Loss. This could mean death or someone moving away. Just something you cared about that's gone. Stress. This is a huge trigger because when you are always under pressure and trying to get things done and you just feel extremely stressed, you feel you need a break, a way out, and soon the stress eats you away. You can become depressed from feeling the way you do every day. Social media. The things we see on social media are also a significant cause for mental health issues because of how people are and talk about things. Their bodies, their weight, what's going on at home and around the world. The more you read, the more you start to develop similar feelings for yourself. The image. We see models, other images and movies that display the perfect image. This can also cause mental health issues because the people whose bodies are inadequate to this perfect image often feel that there is something wrong with them that leads to mental health illnesses. Puberty. Puberty triggers a lot of hormones and feeling to do with all sorts, mainly about how our bodies are changing and developing new things. These feelings and hormones often are another cause of mental health problems. Being mentally healthy involves being strong enough to overcome difficult situations and changes in our lives, and also to believe in ourselves and build up our self-esteem to keep us happy in life. We hope that one day more people will feel more mentally healthy and enjoy life. Um, children in Need funded programme run by Maystone and Midkent Mind in order to help reduce the need for young, young people aged between 14 and 18 to access CAMS. So we should be, the idea is that we will reach, come into schools and um, into colleges and other organisations where young people are and get to young people before their mental health problem deteriorates to such a, a state that they need to go to CAMS and so they're getting the support if, yeah, as um, preventative rather than when they have got a mental health problem. Okay. Um, if we know someone with a mental health illness, what advice would you give us to help them? So seek help. So never try to deal with it on your own. Always be supportive and understanding of your friend, um, but get them to see either, either their GP or to give us a call at, at Maystone and Kent Mind. Okay. Um, how do you think as a school we can make more awareness of mental health? by doing things like having these classes that we're running at the moment and by talking more about mental health can, is, is the main thing, getting people to talk about how they're feeling and, how, and how, what they're going through at the moment can really help with people's mental health. So it's mainly talking and awareness raising. It should fit within like PHSE or um, a lot of subjects could, could talk about mental health and how people are feeling because people experience mental health in all different ways. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We're going to report on why too much sugar is bad for you. The first reason is it can rot your teeth, also because it can make bad bacteria in your mouth. Secondly, sugar is high in fructose, which can overload liver, your liver and cause liver disease. Thirdly, having too much sugar in your diet can cause diabetes. One of the greatest causes of death worldwide is cancer, and many scientists believe that high sugar consumption can contribute to cancer. 
Finally, as many people realise, sugar is leading cause of obesity in both children and adults. We have researched the sugar content in different drinks. Did you know that a fruit tree contains 2.2 grams of sugar? and a can of Coke contains 35 grams. The worst drink we found is a banana milkshake which has 46 grams of sugar in it. The healthiest option is water which contains no sugar. Recently there have been reports that some doctors are suggesting there should be a ban on tackling in rugby in schools. They have said that there are too many injuries caused by tackling and that the game would be safer if the game was non-contact. Some of the injuries which can be caused by tackling include broken bones and concussion and concussions, which is a head injury. These can affect children when they grow up. At the moment, students are allowed to learn how to play contact rugby in schools. In our school, it is taught by PE lessons as well as at clubs. People who are against the ban feel that as long as students learn how to tackle safely is an important part of the game. We have interviewed our PE, our PE teacher to get their opinion on whether or not tackling should be banned in schools. Do you think it is dangerous to teach tackling in school? I don't think it's dangerous to teach tackling in school if the teacher is well qualified and the drills and skills are done in a way that make the kids feel safe and it's progressed sensibly uh, and people are matched up with people of similar ability and similar height and weight. What would you do if you could not do tackling? Uh, if we couldn't do tackling then we would have to just do touch rugby. Um, which would be a shame because I think the skill uh, the skill set and the things it brings out of students is, is excellent. Um, do you think it will affect the adult game if children do not learn to tackle in school? I think it will have a big impact on the game because a lot of children play rugby for the first time when they come to secondary school. Uh, a lot of kids play rugby and enjoy it because of the tackle inside. Uh, when we don't do tackling in lessons, a lot of kids do actually become disheartened and not as interested with the with the subject. Uh, also to that, like I said earlier, if the students aren't learning it or playing it in school, they don't play as much, so that's less chance for us to get students over to the local rugby club, r r local rugby clubs, and so yeah, less people playing, which means less people playing at an older age and getting into bigger teams.